Hi, so we're going to talk a little bit about the part before I actually show you the assembly and disassembly and replacement of this unit. So I got this from Amazon for $230, <laughs> and my original quote for the service of this was about $1,000. And that's just a crazy amount of money, $1,000, so I saved about $800 doing this myself, and it was pretty straightforward. So I will have the link in the description area of this video of where you could get this unit on Amazon for $230. Now, um, the reason why I had to replace this was because it was making loud clanking noises, constant loud clanking noises, and I had a decision to make whether I was going to replace the entire unit or whether I was just going to replace the motor. And after a bunch of research, uh, the unit and the motor was basically the same price, and the motor itself is not very straightforward to remove from this unit. So it was just better for me to get an aftermarket part and replace the entire unit. Now, on this side, you see the triangular piece. So this triangular piece attaches to the HVAC unit, and what you do is you put a bead of silicone on and around the edge of that triangular piece. And once you do that, there's four screws that actually self-aligns this entire unit onto the HVAC. So um, that's really it on this side. On the other side, um, mainly is where the motor is. So you can see this big long tube, uh, that circular end. So the circular end, there's two opposite sides to it. Uh, one on this side and one at the top. And for the most part, you're only going to use one side. I ended up using the bottom right-hand side. So for me, um, now the motor is in the middle, but you can see at the bottom here, there's a drain tube. And in the original, the old unit, there's actually a rubber piece that covers this. So if you do see that in your old unit, remember to take that, remove it, and put that in that uh, old corner there. Now where my thumb is, is the area where there's the pressure sensor switch. So that those, those uh, little uh, holes is where you're going to remove and move the pressure sensor switch. The entire replacement should take about less than an hour. So I took about two hours because I had the learning process and I was examining every little thing as I was doing it. So um, it's rather basic. There's going to be four screws removing the main housing. And then there is two screws replacing the pressure switch. So you're going to swap the uh, pressure sensor switch from the old to new. And then there's just a few tubes of drain tubes that are going to have to be pulled out and, uh, you know, reattached. Uh, so let's go and see the assembly. Hi, so it took me about two hours to replace my air inducer motor. And I want to share with you some of the tips uh, that I went through in the uninstall and repair and replacement of this uh, unit. So the first thing is that the instruction sheet says I have to mess around with the gas. That's really not the case. Uh, the only thing you have to do with the gas is actually just turn off the gas itself. Um, so first off, there's four mounting screws, two at the top and two at the bottom, and they have those black sleeves that extend all the way to the back of the unit for the mounting. And you'll have to save those spacers, what they call spacers, that is more like a plastic sort of straw where you insert the screw into. So make sure you uh, retain those four spacers. Uh, at the bottom left corner is a drainage tube. So you'll have to remove that depending on what type of clip you have. In my case, I had to use needle nose pliers. So here is the pressure switch, and I have to remove the bottom tube. And the bottom tube you just pull out. Uh, it's not a big deal. And there's two mounting screws here where you also take off for the pressure sensor. And after you remove the pressure sensor, uh, so here I'm, I'm just uh, turning off the gas. So make sure you turn off the gas. There's four things you really have to turn off in my case. And I remove this panel to disable uh, a switch here at the bottom. So once I remove the panel, it disables a switch here. And at the top here, I actually have my electrical. So I turned off my electrical. And the last thing that you have to turn off is really the burner itself. And these are all just uh, precautionary. Um, they, the unit itself shouldn't turn on once you turn off the uh, electricity so I turned off the burner here just in case so just make sure you do those four things uh, just to be on the safe side and remove the electrical just by squeezing this and pulling it off so that's the connector to the motor the electrical connector to the motor here um, so the next thing is just to uh, take off the pressure sensor so the pressure sensor is mounted by the two screws um, and so remove the two screws. Uh, they're pretty deep. They're about three quarters of an inch. Um, and you'll see at the bottom of the pressure sensor is a tube. And I, I actually pulled out that tube. Just wiggle it gently. So, so in, uh, in all these cases, if there's something that's stuck uh, that has to do with the rubber pieces, just wiggle it off 
uh, very gently and, and it usually comes off pretty easily. So you see I hung the pressure sensor up at the top uh, with some tape and I uh, just to get it out of the way. Uh, so you see here I put some tape at the bottom right corner is my uh, drainage exhaust and you'll see I have it removed but you'll, you'll notice I put some tape where the original position was so I know how deep I have to push it back in when I reinstall it. So make sure you put some electrical tape there uh, just in case. Uh, and I actually needed paper towels because there was a lot of water there when I removed the exhaust. The exhaust, And you'll see the tape that I have here uh, which marks the original position. And I removed uh, and I wiggled it out and there was about two inches left in the PVC and you'll see here uh, the PVC has two inches left. So what I first did is you, you'll see this triangular mounting point and the triangular mounting point they say you should put silicone on it and make sure you buy silicone that's rated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, even though it doesn't really get that hot maybe it gets 80 degrees Fahrenheit but um, uh, you'll see the drainage pipe here and the electrical but I, I really want to talk here about the mounting point that triangular mounting point and I, I struggled with this uh, mainly because I wanted to do a test run where, where I put the unit in there just to make sure that the mounting points were flush from the, the this is the old, old unit here that I'm showing you so there's two points that actually help you align but they didn't really help me align too much be, because you can't really see or feel whether it was aligned and and here's the uh, spacers that I'm talking about so make sure you re retain these spacers so um, so I actually scrapped uh, doing the actual test run where where I do the uh, test mounting uh, because what I found what I found was that I had to align the four screws at the, t the two screws at the top and two screws at the bottom just to make sure it mounted so so the test run itself to actually test the mounting didn't really help uh, so so what I did was I, I put the silicone I had to scrape off the old silicone and put the new silicone uh, on the mounting surface of where the furnace is and once I did that I actually uh, put the uh, put the assembly in there and align the four screws so you'll see here is the silicone that I have and I use the silicone uh, in that triangular piece and you'll see uh, in the background here I actually replaced uh, the new assembly already and uh, but but that was the main thing was uh, I did struggle with putting the assembly in there during my test run when I try to do the test fitting without actually putting in the four screws that doesn't work because what aligns it is really the four screws. Once you have the four screws aligned, then the triangular piece itself will align automatically. Um, so there you go. That that's really it. Um, and and you'll see in the background with my electrical tape on the exhaust. Um, and uh, you know I, I just turned everything on, but you, you'll see how convenient it is if you mark that exhaust with electrical tape. So so you know how deep you you've put in the pipe uh, right here. Uh, because the you, you, last thing you need is to second get, guess yourself whether you've you've put it in deep enough. Uh, uh, but in any case, uh, that's really it. And uh, uh, send me any questions you have. And uh, I hope this helps. And uh, thank you for watching.